Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill Live this Sunday morning. You know, the battles on the Hill are heating up as Congress tries to come to an agreement for the funding on Ukraine, which we just talked about, and support for Israel as well as immigration and border reform. Now, Standage, familiar friend of the program here, is the White House columnist for the Hill, follows all of this closely. Uh, do we know what is in the Senate bill? Because we keep hearing about mm -hmm. it, not too many details. Though. Right, that is a real problem. We don't know the specifics. We know broadly it's about making it more difficult to claim asylum here, making it easier for the administration to deport people quickly. And just recently the president talking about the capacity to shut down the border, not the kind of rhetoric we normally hear from Democratic presidents. Now that kind of opened some eyes because mm -hmm. people said, well, you know, if Biden is talking about this, it must be in the bill. But how exactly would that work? And that would that necessarily mean he would do it if this gets signed, even though he said he would sign it right away? So that's one of the concerns that Republicans have when they push back against this bill. They basically say, we don't trust President Biden to impose these things fully. The argument, as far as we know, is that if there were more than 5,000 border crossings in a day, the president would have the capacity to close the border. How that works, practically speaking, is more complicated. Now, over on the House side, it's a completely different reaction to this, because the House Speaker, Mike Johnson, has been saying this is dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. Why is it dead on arrival in the House if Republicans have been saying that they want to strengthen the border security? Basically because President Trump, former President Trump, is opposed to it. Now, there is an, a, a general bigger issue where there tends to be more hardline opinions on both sides in the House. But the former president coming out in opposition to this causes real trouble because there are more Trump loyalists, for want of a better term, in the House. So is this a situation where it's not necessarily the details of the legislation that's being mm. talked about or the political ramifications of a presidential campaign being underway? Yeah, I think that second point is really the more important one right now. Because former President Trump has taken the position he has taken, it's difficult for Republicans to go against him. This is getting all caught up into the whole dynamic of a looming presidential campaign. Just a moment ago, as you saw, we had the Ukrainian ambassador sitting in the chair you're in right now. They have been waiting and watching for a Ukrainian aid package mm. to get through Congress. It's still waiting. Mm. And meanwhile, Israel is also looking for an aid package as well. How did these three things get all tied up together now? So they got tied up together because Republicans wanted, as a bargaining chip, a change in immigration in return for giving aid to Ukraine. The Republican Party has grown increasingly skeptical of the U.S. support for Ukraine. So they were tied together somewhat against the wishes of Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. But once they got shackled together, it's very difficult to unshackle them. There were some concerning statements from McConnell this week mm. about where all this is headed. He has been steadfast saying the United States needed to deliver this Ukraine mm -hmm. package. It seemed to signal some defeat on his part this week that that was going to happen. Yes, I think so. I think his position has become somewhat marginalized within the party. He is perhaps the strongest advocate among senior Republicans of continuing U.S. aid to Ukraine at the same time cadence. It appears within his party he's losing that argument. Now one thing Congress has been able to do lately is avoid any government shutdown by kind of parceling out some of the work. They've come up with these staggered financial deadlines and that seems to have been keeping the government open. Is there any possibility they could disentangle these three things? operate on them separately and try to get some agreement on each individual one, maybe one of them could move forward? I think probably aid to Israel would be the most likely of the three because you have broad bipartisan support for aid to Israel. You do have critics on the left of the Democratic Party, but broadly there is a critical mass there. I think Ukraine and the border are more difficult issues because there are more schisms in American public opinion. Do we have a larger problem on the Hill right now is that the Congress cannot seem to operate during a campaign? Oh, that all the political co complications come in and nothing gets done. Absolutely. And there is also that issue where there are certain politicians in both parties who prefer to have the issue to fight on as opposed to a solution to the problem. How soon do you think we might know whether these deals are dead on arrival, as the House Speaker has said, mm -hmm. or it might have some chance to take flight? I think what we know right now is the chance of a deal is receding, support for it is eroding. Whether that just collapses completely, we may find out pretty soon.
within the next couple of weeks. All right, Niall Stan is joining us from uh, the Hill today, and uh, we, of course, have a lot going on here, so we want you to come back real soon. Always a pleasure. All right.